In this Circuits of the Past video, I'll tell you about the history of the Red Bull Ring, home of the Austrian Formula One Grand Prix. The original name of the circuit we know today as the Red Bull Ring is actually called the Österreich Ring. It all started in 1958 with races on an airfield in Zeltweg. In 1961 and in 1963, the inaugural Formula One races were held here, but it wasn't until 1964 that there was an official Austrian Grand Prix that actually counted for the championship. However, the airfield track was very bumpy and it caused lots of suspension failures. So after three races, the track was found no longer suitable for Formula One. Manicur, it certainly was not. Not far from Zeltweg, they started to build a new permanent racetrack. It opened in 1969 under the name Österreich Ring. The Österreich Ring was a very challenging track, with fast corners and huge elevation changes. It hosted the Formula One Austrian Grand Prix from 1970 right the way through to 1987. Because of its challenging character, it was also one of the most popular tracks on the F1 calendar. But as usual, beautiful tracks are often dangerous tracks too. When in 1975 Mark Donoghue died, the fast first corner was modified for the 1976 Grand Prix. A year later, that corner became a chicane. However, after the 1987 Austrian Grand Prix, the Österreich Ring was removed from the F1 calendar altogether. In the 1990s, the track was modernised. The new version opened in 1996 under the name A1 Ring, after the telecom provider who financed the reconstruction. But the natural flow of the circuit was destroyed in this new layout. Actually, it was much more now a stop-and-go circuit, and when Formula One signalled its return, many initial thought that the circuit would be too easy, and akin to a point-and-squirt go-kart track. From 1997 through to 2003, the new A1 ring hosted the Formula One Austrian Grand Prix again, providing good racing and controversy in equal measure. A year later, in 2004, the old Österreich ring was bought up by Red Bull owner Dietrich Mateschitz. He had ambitious plans to rebuild the racetrack and expand it with a hotel, kart track, racing school and so much more. Also, the lost part of the original Österreich ring would be reconstructed to the new track. Assuming that all the permissions had been granted already, they started to demolish the old buildings. This triggered protests from the nearby owners, and the Austrian Environmental Council had to step in. They didn't agree to the planning permissions, and so the building works had to be stopped immediately. Negotiating contracts is much harder when you don't have everyone under contract in the first place. What remained was a half-demolished racetrack, similar to Herman's Carnage on a night out, so I've been told. So now, at least, the iconic Österreich ring seemed to be gone for good. Years passed, and after years of abandonment and loggerheads, finally planning permission to rebuild the track was given, but then another problem happened and reared its head. Investors withdrew from the project. Nevertheless, in 2008, building could finally begin again, but because of the withdrawal of the investors, the project had had to be shrunk in size. As there was less money, they could only rebuild the track of the recent A1 configuration. When it reopened, the name was changed to the Red Bull Ring, and in 2014, Formula One finally returned back to Austria. Officially, there are still plans to expand the track and reconnect the abandoned Western Loop. In the spring of 2016, photos of a new connection to the abandoned Western Loop appeared on the internet. Several media outlets speculated about a possible revival of the old section, However, the operators of the Red Bull Ring have remained silent all along. When Herman visited the Red Bull Ring in the summer of 2017, the Old Western Loop was still abandoned. Why they've rebuilt those connections and why it's still not progressed currently remain a mystery. Before the section will ever be used again, they'll have a tough battle to get permission because of noise complaints from local residents. Why you would move next to a racetrack and then complain about the noise is completely beyond me. 
but until something changes, the project will remain in stasis. So that's it for the history so far of the Red Bull Ring. If you want to know more about it, check out the article on the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There you can also download a free ebook about seven abandoned racetracks that you can visit legally. For now though, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video from Circuits of the Past.